Hey guys, my name is Jaina and welcome to my reviews of both Better Off Friends by Elizabeth Eilberg and The Museum of Intangible Things by Wendy Wonder. I kind of promised myself that all of the books that I mentioned in my most anticipated lists that I will make a review of them or just a discussion for Ignite Me, I did the live show and for the contemporaries I'm planning on combining two books in a video and just like briefly talking about each one and what I thought of them because they are, especially the contemporaries, they're my top 15 most anticipated contemporaries and you guys know I'm such a contemporary fan. So I thought since they're 15, I just combined two and talk about them. So the first two from the 15 are Better Off Friends by Elizabeth Eilberg and The Museum of Intangible Things by Wendy Wonder. The Museum of Intangible Things, I'm pretty sure it was on my top six books that I'm really excited about. So this was really high up and Better Off Friends was either 14 or 13 or 11, I'm not entirely sure, but had really high expectations of them. Unfortunately for these two books, I have to say, they were a tad bit disappointing in that I had high expectations, but they weren't really met, and I'll discuss why for each book. But both books actually received 3.5 stars out of five, obviously. The first one is Better Off Friends. So Elizabeth Eilberg, I know she writes a lot of middle grade books, but I made sure, like I specifically had to look at and see whether this is middle grade crossover with YA or just purely YA and people told me that this is YA and the genre is written on Gertrude's on the right that it's YA but when I read this it had such a middle grade vibe it was, it starts off when they're in elementary school and it goes all the way till their senior year so that's a big um, timeline for just a very very short book like 280 pages I think so you don't really get much depth so you get a very long timeline but like every situation or every um, issue was just skimmed over I, I didn't feel like it was we delved deeper into every issue that popped up so this is about two best friends and basically the story is that can they be best friends or does the inevitable happen and then they become more. So this is what it explores. So the way it's written is that after every chapter you kind of get snippets of either text conversations or uh, chatting conversations and it's of them, I don't know when it's set but it's set in the future even after the end of the book. So you don't really know whether they're together or they're still friends. Obviously they're still friends but we don't really know whether it's more or not. So that's the whole mystery of the book, and not really a mystery, but but yeah. And I wasn't really invested, I have to say. I didn't really care much about the protagonists. I felt that there wasn't really that big of a plot and it could have been handled much better by adding more plot and more emotions. And this is told from both of their POVs, so nothing was really hidden from us and there's nothing I was like looking forward to. Um, I'm pretty sure I knew what the ending would be and I don't know, I felt like the writing was very middle grade-ish. It was for much younger uh, readers. If it would have been a story or something exciting or something that I was um, invested in, I would have liked it a bit more. But for here, it was just not my cup of tea. So I ended up giving it three and a half. I think the idea is, or the plot idea is really good. I just think it wasn't really executed that well especially with just the flow of the plot and the flow of um, everything basically, so three and a half. Then we've got The Museum of Intangible Things by Wendy Wonder. I really loved the cover. I was so excited when I got this because I loved her debut novel, The Probability of Miracles. It's about two girl best friends and they go on a road trip. Now. It says here, like from the beginning, that they kind of feel suffocated and Hannah and Zoe. So then Zoe tells Hannah that, okay, we need to go. I can't stay in this place. I can't stay in this suffocating place with these people and with this nowhere, no future and all that stuff. So they go on the road trip. But I feel like something really big was left out of the synopsis and you might think that this is a very light-hearted read, but it's not. If you're picking this up because of the whole road trip theme and like, you know, best friends and discovering yourself, I don't think it's light-hearted at all. 
it deals with something um, very serious and it's mental illnesses so Zoe does have a mental illness, she's bipolar and I feel like this synopsis should contain something so important in this novel. You, We should know that that's why Hannah went along on the road trip and everything and I don't know, I just felt that Zoe did whatever she wanted to do and Hannah just went along with it and even though I do like the chapters and how they're titled, so every chapter is titled something different. This is Gluttony, then we've got Audacity, there's also Insocuance. I, th I don't know if I said that right or not, or not, but Zoe's really big on that word. And I just, I did enjoy it, I was just a bit uncomfortable because I wasn't expecting this from the novel, but then I did get used to it. However, the direction that the novel took was so unexpected even after my unexpected beginning. It was also unexpected towards the end and I do have to say I did tear up. I was very, it was emotional but I just felt that the beginning was really really dull. It took them I think over a hundred pages just to decide to go on a road trip and I have, this is one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to books and it is that the synopsis tells something that will happen like way later on in the book. So they're going on a road trip. It happens 150 pages later. Why would you tell me something that happens in 150 pages? Either they go on a road trip in the first 30 pages or you just don't tell me they're going to go on a road trip because I'm just waiting for that. Waiting. And I hate waiting for something. Like when they say, oh, look out for chapter 55 because something big is going to happen. And then it's all like, oh, what chapter am I on? No, five more chapters left. Three more chap. No. I don't like it when I know that something's go going to happen, but it's taking so long for it to happen and I'm just waiting for it to happen so I can finally start enjoying the novel and not know what the next step in the novel or the next, the progression of the plot basically. So I really like the relationship between Zoe and Hannah. Zoe is a very free-spirited person while Hannah is more the cautious one, the one that always thinks of the consequences. And that's why Zoe does these whole, you know, uh, title, well not Zoe, but like the whole title chapters because Zoe is teaching her to be innocuous or to not care about the consequences or etc, etc. Karma, about karma too. So I just, I liked the um, chapters. I do feel that this is not for younger adults. No, don't recommend it for younger teens at all. There's a lot of um, crude terms here. Ow, crude terms here that I don't, would not really want my younger, you know, sibling to be reading about. So maybe like 14 and above, 15, 14. Let's face it, kids these days know everything. It's kind of disappointed because uh, it wasn't even my expectations, it was just the writing and just the plot. Nothing much happens after the road trip and it's just a lot of fillers and I expected more from Wendy Wonder but still ended up giving it three and a half and it was still an enjoyable read. So these are the two books that I reviewed. If you guys have those on your wish lists or pre-orders, I still recommend you guys read them and let me know what you think about them and which ones you're excited about and which ones are your cup of tea. And uh, that is it. Have a nice day, guys. Bye.